Welcome back to Ultimate Living. We're talking with David Solomon, the author of Penguinpedia, which will be coming out this fall. Now, David, I want to know, <laughs> how did you become interested in studying penguins? I was always interested in nature, and I travel a lot around the world taking pictures with my camera, until one day I got to Chile, and I found myself alone. There was nobody else there in the middle of a colony of a Magellanic penguin. And I had maybe two, three hours to, to spend. And all of a sudden, I started looking on them, and they just reminded me and my neighborhood. I mean, I found out that each one of them has a nest, which is like we having a house. Each one has a wife. Each one has a kid. They have responsibilities. They fight. They cheat. <laughs> they hug. They kiss. I just looked at them, and I said, Looks like a colony, like a kindergarten. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so many little people, and many, many of them, and they all were interacting in, 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 in a social way that really attracted my eyes. I fell in love with them. Mm -hmm. So mm. really, you were interested in their social life and their, uh, you know, how they relate to each other. You know, penguins, in my opinion, have emotions. Maybe biologists will dispute that because they keep emotions to humans only, but. It is obvious when you look on penguins that they have respect to the mate. Mm -hmm. They they bow, they touch each other, they cuddle. They, in many ways, the minds of a teenagers mm. in love. <laughs> then, when they walk out and their neighbors, they call. There are some species like kings that spend 80% of the time fighting with the neighbors for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> they then make peace and when we walk to the beach with the exactly the same neighbor, they become a very coherent diving group. They have to, in order to be able to find the prey, in order to protect themselves from, or at least to be aware that there is a seal or somebody who wants to prey on them. Mm -hmm. So they change so much. It's, 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 it's like really being in a neighborhood in New York City. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? That's funny. I, would, I would never thought of that. That's, so when uh. you were, you spent two years really researching in the Austral Summers. Tell us, I know you had to have some yeah. adventures and some mishaps on, along the way. You know, I had two very uh, interesting situations. One of them, I was stuck on a boat for uh, four days in the middle of the ice. The boat got locked in ice. We couldn't go. We couldn't move. And... It looked like we might stay there for a while. <laughs> uh, it so happened that uh, the same cruise, the same trip, the following trip, they got stuck and were late for 10 days. They made port 10 days later. The other one is I went to an island in uh, uh, outside New Zealand where we need, the only way to get there was to take a private yacht. Mm -hmm. So it was a boat maybe 40 feet long. We went, the sea was very calm, and we had a, a great ride going there, a three days ride, but when we got there, the New Zealand government doesn't approve anybody walking on the island for mm -hmm. fear of damaging the environment. Mm -hmm. And we, I had to take the pictures from a little boat called Zodiac. Mm -hmm. So now we are taking pictures, and all of a sudden I hear, dun, 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 mm -hmm. and there is no engine. So oh, no. I found myself with, and the boat driver, right in front of those huge rocks, where I thought that he's going to try to go to shore, and he's telling me very nervously, that shore is the worst place we can go. We have to row our way oh. out, mm -hmm. and we're going like this, hoping you know, that the waves don't take us mm -hmm. into the shore. Finally, we made it out, and the yacht came and picked us up with a crane, and we went back to where we are supposed to, but it, there were mm -hmm. Some minutes of scare. Well, I want to know what uh, natural like threats that they really do face. We have 17 species. Half of the species are under threat, and two or three might even become extinct pretty soon. We have one species in uh, Galapagos that has 1,500 individuals left. That's close. We have one in New Zealand called Yellow Eye that has four or 5,000. On the other hand, we have the macaroni penguin probably with 20 million. So the 
the way they are handling the changes that the world is going to, the global warming and mm -hmm. other uh, chemical changes in the water because of pollution mm -hmm. and stuff like this mm -hmm. is very different. Some of them, we have to remember that penguins are masters of adaptation. They adapted for 70, with so many other animals disappearing mm -hmm. from those the period that have been here, they were always been able to survive. But we're seeing a clear distinction between some of the species. So some are handling the changes that the world, that we impose upon the world mm -hmm. pretty well, and it doesn't affect them, while others are really being decimated. Mm -hmm. So the biggest problem we've, we see is lack of uh, food. And those, are the, the species that get affected by this are species that mostly prey on fish mm -hmm. because they like sardines, they like spuds, and they like anchovies. And people like the same thing. Yeah. So you have an African penguin that at one time had numbers in the millions, now have maybe 60, 70,000 left. A reduction of over 95% in the last maybe 40, 50 years. The main reason over here is they just die of starvation. They cannot find enough yeah. anchovies and enough uh, spuds to it. The, it should be noted that a penguin that weighs maybe 15 pounds needs five or six pounds of fish a day. Mm -hmm. So they need an enormous amount of food to survive, and it's difficult for them. Mm -hmm. And we, when humans take out the fish, mm -hmm. that, that causes a lot of problems. Another problem is pollution, mostly ships that drop oil in the water. Once yeah. they get the swim yeah. to oil, yeah. they're finished. Another one is other chemicals that boats drop. Mm -hmm. Fishing also hurts them because people put stationary nets yep, yeah. and penguins get suffocated mm -hmm. because they get stuck in the net. It should be noted here that uh, 50 years ago, collecting eggs was a hobby, it was a business. And Falkland Islands used to ship hundreds of thousands of eggs to England a year. This now is stopped. Also, people used to barbecue penguins, mm -hmm. believe it or not. So. Mm -hmm. They, the species that are close to human, they suffer the most because human activity really yes. doesn't correlate with their ability to survive. Now, in your book, your book is a photographic journey with the penguins, correct? The book has uh, pictures and biology. Mm -hmm. it, ha it tells the story of the penguins in a very uh, detailed way. It is probably the most detailed book to come out in 15 years, detailing the relationship, their appearance, their uh, reproduction process, the molting, everything that a penguin does is there in 17 times, 17 species, each one in its own way. There are charts in the book that have information that are collected from hundreds, probably 500 studies that we read, something that has not, done, has not been done in, in 15 years, and a lot of the new information came in the last 15 years. Mm -hmm. So the book has the description, the, the narratives, the chart, and the pictures. The most important part, of course, is the pictures, and that's, I try to show, I, I just don't have a picture of a penguin standing, I mm -hmm. try to show their activities and what I find special. I spent hours sitting in mm -hmm. photo of mm -hmm. a group of penguins and just trying to find an interesting mm -hmm. photo to, to show the character more than anything else. Okay, let's say Deandra now, because I know we're gonna wanna go visit now. Mm -hmm. What's the best place that you would recommend, David, to go visit the penguins. If we we need to do that, I'd okay. The best that. place, yeah. But not without any question, is the Falkland Islands. It's a little complicated to get there. You have to fly to Chile because Argentina had a war, and you cannot fly from there, even though it's closer. You go to southern Chile. You take a flight. It's once a week. So you, when you go to the Falkland, you stay there for a week. And while you're there, there are local airlines, and over there you can see four different species from four different uh, families. So there are four completely different species. What time of the year do you go, David? What time of the year? You have to go December to March. December to March, okay. You can't wait. Well, I've been able to see the little ones in Africa, the African penguins. Um, when you go to Johannesburg, you can go for a day trip to see the penguins. And, but these penguins I've seen are just these tiny little guys, but they're cute, they're really cute, and I've enjoyed, I've seen those twice. 
but those are the only penguins I've actually seen, you know, up close and personal. The African penguin is actually a mid-sized penguin, and mm -hmm. most of the penguins that you're going to see are this size. You have the emperor and the king that are much mm -hmm. larger, mm -hmm. and you have two or three other species. One of them called little because it's so little, mm -hmm. and those are much smaller. But 12 out of the species are more or less in the range where you saw the Africans. They are little animals. That's why they're so cute. Well, we're going to have to get your book first. Yes, and then when yes. we get the book, then we'll, I'm sure, be planning a trip. I mean, because I know yeah. you, we oh, love, love animals. Yes, so I think mm -hmm. that would be a trip that I definitely want to go on. And I can't wait for the book Penguinpedia to come out. And we'll be able to see all kinds of penguins and learn about the habitat. And I just love to learn about animals. We both, we mm -hmm. love animals. Our family loves animals. And anything uh, that gives us more... Uh, information on the social behavior of animals I think really helps us because once we understand that we're all connected I think that that's really important then you have respect for um, yes. every species mm -hmm. and I think it's important to respect the animals respect human beings and you learn so much about that from animal behavior so um, we are going to come right back and we're going to close in a few minutes with a little bit more from David Solomon the author of Penguinpedia on Ultimate Living. Welcome back to Ultimate Living, where we've been joined today by David Solomon, the author of a new book called Penguinpedia that's coming out very soon. So David, we're so glad you've been yes. here today. Why don't you tell people a little bit about your website and how to get your book and all that good stuff. Okay, the book is coming soon. It's going to be looking like this. This is the cover. It's called Penguin-Pedia. And uh, it should be in the stores for the holiday season. Uh, you could also you should also be able to get it on uh, Amazon.com. We have uh, right now a website, penguinpedia.com. We have a great and very successful page on Facebook, same again, Penguinpedia. Mm -hmm. And uh, we update the penguinpedia.com and the Facebook continuously to the point that we answer questions, we change the pictures, it's really fun. You should go and try it on the internet. Mm -hmm. So do you have the pictures for people to see on I there too? I have a lot oh, of the great. pictures. Oh, great. Some new pictures will come in the book. Mm -hmm. You have to remember that I took pictures for two years, so yeah. I have thousands of pictures. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, a lot more than can go in the book. Yeah. So, yes. Well, great. Well, I'm going to go on yes. the Facebook and check that out and go on the website, and I'm sure I can become a friend, right, on your Facebook? <laughs> we would love you to be a friend okay. of ours. I will everybody be a friend. <laughs> so if you guys go to my Facebook page, I'll be his friend, and you can be a friend as well, and you can see what's going on in the Penguinpedia world. And we hope that you will also check out, I hope you'll check out Hard Night Good Morning's Facebook page, as long as, as as well as the DeAndra Simmons page, and go to www.ultimateliving.com, and you can see my mother and my our nutrition and skincare company. We also encourage you to sign up for our eBlast newsletter, and every 10 days to two weeks, you'll get what's going on in the world of Ultimate Living, not only on the show, but what might be going on at our office that's special that you can take advantage of. Also, when you have time, go to hardnightgoodmorning.com. I am updating my blogs on a weekly basis, guys, so everything you see there is up to date, and you never know what I'm going to be blogging about. I could be blogging about makeup tips, eyelashes, hair, whatever. You never know, as well as skincare. Thank you for joining us today, and we hope to see you for another inspirational half hour of Ultimate Living.